what's up? My name is Chris Trini. Super excited to be here at VidCon. But I'm also excited because uh, I get to talk about two of my favorite things ever, which is filmmaking and Adobe. Now, of course, I would say that you know I'm at the Adobe booth, but I really mean that. Um, and honestly, um, Adobe tools, all the software like After Effects, Photoshop, Premiere, they've become an essential essential tools in my toolkit. And uh, just as much as a lens or a camera, now I use After Effects, uh, Photoshop, and Premiere for all of my projects. Uh, and in fact, today I wanted to share with you how using apps like this and combining them have actually improved me as a filmmaker. So um, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Chris Trini, as I said earlier. And I, have a, I run and I start a YouTube channel called Chris Card Productions. Uh, so you're going to be seeing a few, of the, a few shots from some of the shorts that are on that channel. And today I'm just pretty much just skimming through some basic concepts and ideas. But if you want to go more into the technical detail of uh, how all of that works out, then you can go on my channel and there's, uh, there's in-depth tutorials on, uh, on all of that stuff that we're going to be talking about today. So um, one of the first things that we're going to talk about is, um, is, uh, is lighting. So essentially what a movie is, is lights and shadows. So that's why lighting is so important. It can really elevate amateur video to professional cinematic images just with lighting. So saying that you can achieve cinematic lighting in post is a little weird. Uh, and in fact, I'm also wearing the shirt Fix It in Post, which is something that you should never do. But sometimes, you know, for lower budget uh, productions, that's kind of a must. You know, you don't have a large crew, you don't have uh, a ton of lights, you don't have a gaffer, you don't have grips. So uh, sometimes you just have to uh, solve some, some of those problems in post. Um, so that's what, what we're going to look at today. And let me just get rid of this text right here. Uh, so this is part of a short that I, that I shot not too long ago in Italy. And the original clip looks something like, like that. So not very appealing. It's kind of very flat in color, uh, very, I don't know, orangish. Doesn't look that great. So one of the first things that, um, that I did was right here, I added, um, I created a mat. And let me just, OK, I created a mat, and I rotoscoped my subject out. So that's pretty much all I have is just a duplicate of my footage. And then I just uh, created a solid with a map. And um, that's just pretty much separating her from the background. So now that I have that, all I added on the background was a simple like brightness and contrast effect. And you can see what that does. It pretty much just it dims down the background in a way. Uh, then I also added some fake shadows. And if I click on that, uh, on that layer, all this is, this is a, uh, it's like a dark orange shadow to match the, the composition. And essentially all I did is just create this mask feather that out, uh, I set it to overlay, and I, I lowered the opacity quite a bit. So this just kind of dials in your attention onto our subject even more instead of having your eyes kind of like wander about. Um, another thing that I did is just some basic color grading with some curves. So that's what you're seeing here. Uh, and then I used a plugin called Magic Bullet Looks, which is really great. And uh, let me just open that up for you guys. So just some basic color grading. I did the whole like blockbuster look with the uh, orange and teal. Uh, teal for the shadows and orange for the highlights, which is, I mean, it's very blockbustery. It's very cookie cutter, but that's pretty much all I did for that. And then something else that um, that you can use solids for is creating these uh, these these light hits. So let me just there we go. So that's pretty much just a little subtle detail, just to bring out uh, a little bit more of the orange that we have in the highlights throughout our composition. Uh, so let me move on to the next example. Pretty much similar thing. So I'll show you the original. So this is what it looks like. So again, it's all very kind of flat. And your eyes do kind of wander all over the place. And they're not really focusing on our subject. So uh, similar to what we did um, earlier, I just pretty much just darkened the, the, it's almost like a vignette effect but it really brings in the attention onto our subject. I also noticed that um, there was fluorescent lights on, on this location. And fluorescents usually have this, like, this green uh, tint to them. So all I did was pretty much exaggerate that, uh, still by rotoscoping our subject out, so none of that green light spills onto, um, onto our guy here. Uh, so moving on, this is from, let me pull up the, OK, this is the final image. This is part of a. 
a short film that deals all about cars, and um, I wanted to get that uh, almost that that drive look, where um, where the the mirror is pretty much just lighting his eyes. And this was all done in After Effects. Um, the original clip looks something like that, so very boring, not very interesting, very flat. Uh, and literally all I had to do was add a solid. That's all this is, it's just a solid. I, uh, I really scoped out the steering wheel, uh, a little bit of the roof of the car, and then I just added this mask over his eyes. So literally that's, that's all you need to, uh, to create something that's pretty cool looking that would otherwise be really hard to achieve when you're shooting this. You know, you would have to aim uh, a light at the mirror at the right angle and then have that light reflect back on your subject. Um, and you know, when you don't have a large crew and you're on the go, this can be something that's, uh, that's pretty useful. Obviously it doesn't work for any kind of shot, but this is definitely something that, that can be done for things like this. Now, next thing I want to talk about is um, stabilization. You can get some really cinematic movements really easily now with gimbals, sliders, everything's very affordable. Um, but you know, you still are going to have uh, maybe some bumps, some, some little things like that. So what I wanted to do is ramp preview this, um, these two clips, and I'll show you the before and after. So I shot this in Italy with my Ronin M. So I am using a gimbal, uh, but even, even a gimbal is going to have some, uh, a little bit of shakiness to it. So let me, uh, let me lower the, the quality here to speed things up. I'm running all of this on a, uh, on a MacBook from 2012, so you know, props to After Effects for actually handling that. So you can see here, um, as I'm ramp previewing, there's a little bit of just up and down shakiness. Uh, and that's just because you know it's, it's a three-axis gimbal, it's not a four-axis. So some of your footsteps are still gonna be, uh, be visible. So what I did now, um, now I'm gonna start ramping the second part of the clip, which is the same thing, but with warp stabilizer uh, applied to it. And you can see just how different this looks and how different it feels. It definitely feels a lot more cinematic, more fluid, um, a little bit more high budget. So we get the point, I'm just gonna play at full speed now. So this is not stabilized. Again, we're seeing a lot of that up and down motion. Uh, and then let me just move forward to the stabilized clip. So much different. It's a lot less distracting and it just, it adds to the movement of the shot and everything. So let's move on to the next example. Um, and I wanna talk about creating atmosphere. And this is something that you can easily do in After Effects. Uh, you can do this with um, like dust, smoke particles, uh, things like that. And actually, this is something that goes back to Akira Kurosawa and his films. He always would add these elements like dust uh, or smoke or something just going through the image so that even if you have a static shot and it's not moving, you're, you're still having that dynamic feel to it because there's all these elements, there's all of this like visual intriguing stuff going on and, uh, and that can really make something feel big, epic, and, and really cinematic. So let me just, um, let me take out this text real quick. Um, so what I did here, let me go into, this is just a pre-comp. So this is the footage originally. Uh, we did have a smoke machine for this, so there is a little bit of, um, of fog already in the shot. But then what I, what I did is um, I tracked the shot with just basic tracking and After Effects, and uh, I added some particles. You can kind of see them a little bit and then I added some, some smoke. Now, what's interesting about the smoke particle here, if I click on that, is I added a tint effect, and I made it slightly bluish. And that kind of goes back to the whole origin teal uh, look that blockbuster films use. But this is also to add separation with color. You know, whenever you can add, uh, like in the, in the early example, we added separation and depth with, um, with brightness and contrast, well, you can do the same thing with color. And I kind of did that here for the background too. If you see, I, I added like a, a slight tint effect to make it a little bit cooler than, than the subject. Uh, so that's pretty much what's going on there though. So another thing that you can do once you have uh, your subject separated out like this, you can have full control of your background. So you can see that I added a camera lens blur just to make the background a little bit blurrier. So this is just to show that you really have full control. Once you rotoscope your subject and you track your shot, you can use things like solids and adjustment layers and masks, which are the first things that you learn uh, in After Effects. Like the first time using it, second time using it, you know about solids, about adjustment layers, and, uh, and masking. And literally all you have to do is apply those basic concepts in, in different ways, just think outside the box, and you can, uh, they can actually 
help you achieve uh, cinematic images. So After Effects is not just about you know, explosions and creating visual effects like this. It can actually be a really powerful tool to, uh, to cater for the story that you're trying to tell and to just improve the overall look of your image. So let's see, where was I here? So we talked a little bit about particles. Another thing that you can do um, in After Effects is face tracking. Just tracking in general, if you can track a shot, you can track a face in After Effects. So if I take out this text, um, it's very subtle, and you can see that I added a mask to his face here, and I just did some basic tracking by using his eyebrow, and that's honestly enough to, uh, to get a little bit more detail. Uh, right now, all I did was just add uh, a little bit of contrast, and I added magic bullet looks to soften the skin. This isn't the perfect example because it's a, it's a guy. Usually, you want to do this on, on, on girls, you know, like make them, make them look pretty pretty much by softening the skin with things like this. So this is something that you can do um, with, uh, with your subjects. You can also apply makeup in After Effects. This is not something I did here, but um, if you track enough points, you can use mocha, and you can even apply makeup to people in After Effects. Um, one last thing that I want to talk about is matte paintings. So this is, um, this is actually a 6K uh, matte painting that I did. So I don't know how it's going to run on this computer, but I'm going to try to I'm going to try to do a quick RAM preview. Um, so this is actually using Photoshop and bringing those layers back into After Effects. And this kind of ties in with what we're talking about. You can really expand your worlds. You can be as creative as you want because you have the tools for that. All you all you need to do is pretty much just go into Photoshop and create something like this, and now you have an epic looking set. So. Obviously, you can green screen someone in here. Uh, you can even use like a real environment and do set extensions. So let me just ramp preview this. So you can see that I added some, some fire stock elements, just very simple things. But this just go, goes to show that you can really create, literally you can create entire worlds uh, by using Photoshop and After Effects. And honestly, when you don't have a lot of money for your productions, things like this can really go a long way. So you can like, yeah, zoom in here. It's all very high res, so you can use these for different shots. Um, so that's, that's pretty much um, what I do on my channel. So if you are interested in finding out more about matte painting techniques or some of the stuff that we talked about, I do have uh, this clip right here from a short that I did. Uh, this is a bank heist. Uh, it's a short film that I did for my film school. And uh, this... Is, is like a small set, and pretty much everything around it, uh, this part, was all done in After Effects. So this is like a bank vault that I added in, and something like this can really just increase the production value of, of your project, because um, you can build a set like this very easily. You can find a brick wall, get some PVC pipes, and you have your basic setup, and we only spend like $100 or less to build this set, so it's very cheaply made, but then you add elements like that in After Effects, you add some of these fire embers, some of the particles that we talked about earlier, and you can really uh, make it look bigger than what it actually was. So let me jump into the next uh, example. Going back to matte paintings, uh, this is a music video I did for, for a client, and um, just to add further production value into this, I decided to create a, a matte painting, which is something that really filmmakers can, can use for anything. Right now you're seeing some pretty, um, yeah, that's the matte painting. So let me pause that real quick. Uh, this is kind of like an extreme version of what a matte painting could be. It could be really simple. It could be uh, you shooting somewhere and you want to make it look like New York, so you add a New York skyline. It could be very simple things like that that can, uh, can really go a long way in, uh, in making your production um, just feel bigger, feel with a grander scope. But most important of all, um, Growing and working with Adobe has really showed me that um, by using this, this different software, you can really do anything. You can really create worlds uh, from scratch. You can fix most mistakes, and uh, really any story can be told. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini. If you want to find out more, uh, you can find me on YouTube under Chris Clark Productions. And uh, I'm always there for answering questions. And there's definitely a lot more in-depth tutorials uh, on exactly what we talked about today. So tracking, even um, uh, I go step by step in creating um, these, uh, these, these images that you saw today. I kind of just show you the final product. But here in these tutorials, you can see how uh, you can really take it step by step. Um, so even if you know very little uh, about After Effects and how to use it, you can hop over there and, uh, and pretty much learn all of this from scratch. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, my name is Chris Trini, and I'll see you next time.